good morning. Um, so today is section five, verses one through nine. And let me get out our wheel because it's fun. Uh, the date of the revelation is March 1829 in Harmony, Pennsylvania for Joseph Smith Jr. and Martin Harris. And um, the permanent doctrine or theme is the witnesses of the Book of Mormon. Um, in Revelation in Context, which is in your Gospel Library app, um, it says that Martin Harris is asking for another witness. He's asking for more proof. He's asking to see the plates. Um, he he wants more. He's asking for more. And um, it, it's a very... Well, it doesn't dive into it very much. Um, he just... Was it this one? Right here. Nope, it was this one. Um, uh, so it just says in here that um, he was also distressed to discover that his wife and others sought to discredit Joseph Smith and make him out to be a fraud who was simply after Martin's money. Longing for reconciliation and bearing news of these disturbing efforts, he visited Joseph Smith in Harmony in March 1829. In the podcast, they go on to say that these people who are trying to discredit Joseph Smith are actually trying to form a legal case against him. And they want Martin to be the main witness because Martin has given him $50. Um, and so he's, he's distressed and, um, in the podcast, they say that he went to Joseph and said, listen, if I can see the plates, then I can get on the stand and I can say that I saw them and then they would be discredited and they would believe and everything would be fine. Um, but in this and in this and in the podcast and in, um, the verses one through nine, it, it says that if, if they even saw with their own eyes, they still wouldn't believe. Um, it, in the verses in the section, it talks about believing, um, about, uh, how do I, um, <laughs> The Lord counseled Joseph Smith that faith and testimony cannot be built on tangible evidence alone. An irrefutable witness must always include a manifestation of the Spirit. The Lord said he would give a view of several items related to the translation of the Book of Mormon. The fulfillment of the promise was described by David Whitner, Whitmer, and he describes it, saying that he saw them, though the three witnesses saw them, with their eyes, their witness included more than just seeing. The Lord provided his own witness by his power. The strength of the testimony of these three men did not come from any mortal man, including Joseph Smith. They never denied their testimony, though they failed to remain in harmony with the Lord and his church. Um, so, basically, in the podcast, they were saying that um, even if you see with your own eyes... Um, you you still have a tendency not to believe if you if you have the tendency not to believe the scriptures when you see them or when you read them then you're not going to believe when you see the gold plates um is the main concept that i gained from this um Uh, I think that may be all that I wanted to say. There wasn't too much here. Um, oh, there was one thing that they said in the podcast, which I liked, and I wrote down and put in my 
little notebook journal thing here. Um, they, they said, it took me a while to find a pen afterwards. So I think this may be a paraphrase. Sorry. <sighs> but they say that a man with experience is never at the mercy of a man with an opinion. And I liked that, um, that quote in relation to life and in relation to this section, because, um, with Martin Harris, he's saying, you know, just give me, let me see the plates, ask the Lord if I can see the plates and then everything will be fine. You know, and how often do, do we kind of do that? We kind of go, if I could just know what was going to happen in the future, then everything would be fine. I'd have faith. I'd have faith that everything was, you know, just, just let me know what's going to happen and everything will be fine. Okay. I'll be a super good disciple and I'll do everything you want. Just let me know what's going to happen. Um, but, uh, so he wants to know because he wants to soften the hearts of the men around him, his wife, who, according to the podcast, according to Lucy Smith is insane. Um, uh, but what am I trying to say? Sorry. Um, be, because he is surrounded by these people with opinions and in his mind, if he has this experience, then he, you know, a man with experience is never at the mercy of man with an opinion. But what the Lord wants is us to build our own experiences. He wants us to, um, not just be shown the easy way for Martin seeing the plates would be easy. It would be too easy. And then he wouldn't have to have faith. And then, you know, he wouldn't have to repent. He wouldn't have to, um, humble himself and then therefore gain the opportunity to be one of the three witnesses, which by the podcast, they describe it as a very spiritual, very beautiful scene. Um, so that I liked. And then in the podcast, they also talked about Martin Harris and his character. And, and though for the past week, cause section three was directed to him. Yeah. For the past week, we've been talking about Martin Harris and his mistakes, mm -hmm. how his mistakes are in the scriptures and how every four years we talk about them and, and you can and they go, they said, you know, how would you, uh, like it if your worst mistake was written in scripture and then people had to study it every four years. That's, that is a terribly humbling experience, but they also talked about how, um, how much more relatable Martin Harris is than Joseph Smith. You know, um, the guy, the Dr. Garrett, I think his name was, he talked about how we all wish we could be like Nephi, but we're more like Laman and Lemuel and how we wish we could be like Joseph Smith, but we're much more like Martin Harris. Um, though his worst mistakes are here in the scriptures that we've been studying, he goes on to do wonderful things for the church. He goes on to be a, uh, a figure um, a f spiritual figure. Uh, and, um, in the podcast, they say that he baptizes the great, great, great grandfather of Dallin H. Oaks. Um, but not just that, but, you know, he's, we can see ourselves if we look truly at his experiences and what's happening around him and, and, you know, how many times have we asked for a witness? How many times have we asked or had moments of doubt or feared man more than God? How many times have we sinned and had to repent it? How many times have we had to humble ourselves? He is much more relatable. He is, he's, he's us. He's us. And, um, uh, what is it? They said, what did they say? I don't know that he shouldn't be remembered for his worst mistake. And, you know, um, they said that when we judge somebody, we judge them by their worst day, their worst actions, their worst words. But when we want to be judged, we want to be judged by our best day, our best actions and our best words. And 
we just need to keep that in mind when we're learning about these historical figures. Put ourselves in their shoes and and not just brush off, you know. I think it's easy when we don't dive super deep into church history to just brush off um, a certain situation or event. Anyways, I don't know if that was rambling, but that's section 5 verses 1 through 9. All right, see you later.